I'm Robert Skidelsky. I have been a professor of economics at Warwick University. Through history, we can see patterns of events. And in the, in the course of the last 10 years, you've had rise of populism. It's called populism because we can't think of anything else to call it, but it is extremist politics, all attacking globalization. And then history tells us that the last great wave of globalization, which was in the late 19th century, ended in a world war. Are we in danger of large hot wars as a result of the disturbance? If you're optimistic, we might learn um, from past events, if we fouled up last time, how not to foul up next time. For students of economics, it's extremely important to know where the doctrines they're studying came from which country, which place, and which time. Scientific economics arose in the 18th century. Why in the 18th century? Why not in the 14th century? It, it, was, it was located in a particular era, and you have to know something about the circumstances of that era in order to understand why these doctrines were being proclaimed at this time. And similarly, the Keynesian economic system. Why did it come about in the 1930s? Unless someone knows there was massive unemployment going on for years in that time, they might think it rather odd. Students have to know this thing so that they can resist the fib which their professors foist on them. Just learn these models. These models are the latest, best uh, account we have of how the world works. Say, wait, wait a minute, why didn't they have that model 100 years ago? And why did they have a different model? Why did Karl Marx arise as a major thinker? What was, what was going on at the time of the Industrial Revolution? So I think knowledge of history is incredibly important for, the, for those reasons. As for the history of uh, economic ideas, students should really be brought up against the fact that these ideas have been the subject of dispute there hasn't ever been a single idea. It's only now, I think, that um, the, you know, the economics profession has coagulated you know, on, a, on a, single, a single neoclassical model. But throughout the history of economic thought, there was a you know, big variety of models. They weren't called models then. In fact, that once they're called models, that's the end of, the, that's the, end of the, the road, really. Because as the models become less and less congruent with the facts, so I think the danger, the risk, is that economics comes to be seen irrelevant unless it can renew itself and the signal for its renewal has to be what went wrong 10 years ago because this was the biggest economic horror story of the post-war years and the models of the economists didn't capture it. They didn't think it was possible, they didn't know what to do about it. Now they claim everything's been fixed, but everyone realizes really it hasn't actually been fixed and that we're li liable to sort of relapse. History is very, very important. And the tragedy is they will do less and less history now. So I think the challenges which economists face have already happened in a way, in not in exactly the same form, but they've been there. And, and we can learn how people previously tried to deal with them. Well, to be a good economist, you have to have lots of things. You have to have history to, to be able to locate yourself in the past. You have to have psychology in order to uh, get away from this uh, ludicrous image of economic man, the, the, the human robot. You have to know some sociology in order to understand that humans are linked to each other. You have to know something about politics in order to understand power. So. It's not just history, it's a range of things. And maybe reduce the technique a bit, because a lot of the technique is simply window dressing, cosmetics, just to say, look, I can do it, aren't I wonderful? And, but I don't know anything else, but I can do the technique. Rebalance, rebalance the education of the economist. A bit less technique, a bit more of the other stuff. You know, the great thing about history is it enables you to locate yourself in the flux events are in flux the whole time. We're going from here to there. Where exactly are we located? History, it doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. So you start to recognize where you are and what challenges might lie ahead.